Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sokol from RV Electricity. And today I'm going to do a 30 minute video on RV Electricity Basics, seven things everyone should know about electricity if you're gonna be RVing. And this is brought to you by my friends at Southwire, Surge Guard, Soft Start RV, Car Generator, and Smart Plug. Okay, here's the seven things I think you should all know. There's probably a few hundred more if I thought about it, but this is a good seven to get started. Number one, how to select and use voltmeters. Um, how to test for a hot skin voltage, picking the correct dog bone adapter, why you need an EMS surge protector, running air conditioners on small generators, twist lock shore power alternatives, and backup AC power from your car battery. So number one, I think everyone needs a digital voltmeter for their RV. I get people that call me all the time, my readers um, from over on RV Electricity, and they're asking me, you know, how can I check this? This is dead. I can't get a technician to come out, and I'm in the middle of nowhere. And the first thing I say is, do you have a meter? And they said, well, well, no. And I'm going, well, you need a meter. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is go buy a meter, for heaven's sakes. Um, Here's why. Uh, RVs have these complicated electrical systems, m you know, much, much more stuff going on than a residential, your home electrical power. So in your home, you only basically have to worry about 120 and 240 volts. In an RV, you not only have to worry about that, you also have to worry about 12 volt DC systems. And that can include a converter, an inverter, house batteries, solar power, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, also remember, campground electrical power is strained due to the increasing RV power needs. And finally, you can do a lot of this testing your, yourself and you can prevent damage, speed up troubleshooting in the event of electrical problem and save money. I guarantee you the 40 bucks or so that you need to spend on a meter will in fact save you way more than that if you can kind of start sorting out what needs to happen before you call the RV technician. I think everybody should have one of these little basic $40 meter kits. Um, uh, here's a little south wire unit, but you can get a variety of these from, from Klein and a bunch of other ones work just great. Uh, I like to have a little manual multimeter right here, this guy. Um, it doesn't have to be a big complicated automatic one. The manual ones are much better. I think you the little three light tester is really, really handy just for double checking receptacle, receptacles and generator bonding. And I like the um, non-contact voltage tester. In fact, I pioneered using this to uh, detect hot skin voltages in RVs about 10 years ago. The Southwire makes a really nice meter, as does a variety of other ones. Um, the basic multimeter is really what you need. Don't get a complicated meter. Um, I use in lab testing of components. Um, you can get one of these uh, in a big box store or Amazon for around 20 bucks. Um, and again, uh, there, I have tons of videos and articles um, posted all over the place. Um, most of all of this stuff is available over on rvtravel.com um, that show you how to use this stuff yourself. Basic outlet testing. Again, checking outlets with a three light tester. Again, it's a start. Um, it won't reveal over voltage conditions, but it tells you a lot. Uh, you can keep one plugged into an interior 120 volt outlet. Uh, it will monitor grounding. It'll tell you if something has gone wrong in the middle of the night. Um, note that it is possible for an RV with a hot skin problem to transfer to other RVs in the campground if the pedestal grounding is incorrect. Um, I call this a reflected hot skin condition. It's kind of crazy, but uh, I've got videos to show how it works. Number two, let's talk about testing for what is a hot skin voltage. Basically, since your RV is insulated from the ground, the dirt, it's possible to have an electrical problem that causes the RV skin, chassis, hitch, wheels, and everything else to develop an AC voltage, which can shock you. A properly grounded RV, um, through its shore power cord, not a grounding rod, will prevent hot skin voltage. But a broken ground connection in an extension cord, dog bone adapter, shore power cord, or pedestal can allow a hot skin voltage to occur. So the key here is if you have a properly grounded RV, you cannot get a hot skin voltage. However, if you have a broken wire in your connection, then that will cause definitely some sort of a hot skin voltage to exist. 
Okay, so what is an RV hot skin? Well, we define it. Um, if your RV and its chassis and body has more than 30 volts above earth ground, it's considered to have a hot skin condition. And as you can see from our little guy here, touching any metal part of the RV can allow a fault current to go through you with your heart in the middle down to ground. And this is why it's dangerous. It can cause a shock hazard or even electrocution under the right conditions. We don't like that. Anytime you feel a shock means something has gone wrong with the grounding of your RV and you've got to get this unplugged and fix it immediately. I like these little non-contact voltage testers. In fact, I pioneered the use of these for non-contact testing of RVs for hot skin about 10 years ago. You can get these for you know, 15, 20 bucks. Uh, here's a little Southwire unit right here that works great. Um, basically, they you'll, you'll see that they list from, they say that from 90 to 1,000 volts. However, on something as large as an RV, they will in fact indicate and beep uh, when you get down as low as 30 or 40 volts in most cases. But however, you wanna make sure your non-contact voltage texture is working, that the batteries aren't dead, nothing's broken. You always check it on a known powered outlet first, like in your pedestal, and then you check your RV and then recheck your tester to make sure that it's still working. So it's not a very complicated thing. You basically, as you can see right here, you hold this thing in your hand. Oh, there we go. Um, like a big fat pen. Uh, you've turned it on and tested it already on an outlet. If you go down and touch your RV and that thing beeps, that means you have at least 30 to 40 volts on the skin of your RV, which is caused by a broken ground connection somewhere. And in fact, it will indicate from a foot to two feet away, if you have a full 120 volts on the skin of your RV, this thing will beep when you're two feet away from it, which will really get your attention. And it means you have a serious problem. You've got to go disconnect and figure this out. I have tons and tons of articles that I've written already everywhere that discusses how to find this with a non with, by troubleshooting later. Okay, dog bone adapters. <laughs> there's, there's pictures of me with a big old dog bone hanging in my mouth. It looks like a, a cartoon dog bone, right? Um, why do you need these things? Well, not all campgrounds will have every type of shore power outlets available. So you can use a dog bone adapter to plug your 50 amp RV into maybe you've got a 30 amp you know, outlet at a pedestal, or you want to plug it into a 15 amp outlet at home. Uh, you can also use it to plug your 30 amp RV into a 50 amp outlet or a 15 amp outlet or a 20 amp outlet. Um, and nearly every portable generator will need an adapter since they, they basically have all non RV outlets. So pedestal adapters here, again, this is a dog bone adapter. So this one allows you to safely plug a 50 amp RV into a 20 or 30 amp outlet right here. This is my 50 amp version on this side that my RV would plug into. And this is the type that would plug into say a 30 amp outlet. You can get ones of these that also go down to a 15 or whatever. However, you wanna be careful. Not everything is wired like you would hope. So this guy down in the bottom here, this would plug into a 50 amp outlet on your, your pedestal, but it has 15 amp re, uh, outlets on it right here. So it's possible to take this thing and plug a skinny extension cord into it, draw way more than the 10 or 15 ampers that that little extension cord can, um, can carry and catch the thing on fire in just a few minutes. So you wanna be careful with that kind of stuff. Generator dog bone adapters, um, and again, they make um, all kinds of possibilities here for you can get, like I said, a, a four wire twist lock adapter um, that will adapt to a 30. So this guy right here would plug into a 240 volt generator and it would convert that to a 30 amp, 120 volt outlet because it's only taking one of the lines. So it will not dump 240 volts into your RV. But uh, be careful, somebody builds you one of these from scratch because a DIY one I saw wreck an RV once. You can get ones that will also go the opposite way. So this plugs into like a 3000 watt generator with a three prong outlet and it will convert it over to make a 50 amp outlet 
uh, so that you can plug your 50 amp shore power cord into it. But realize it doesn't make more amperage. It doesn't make more voltage. It just adapts this 30 amps, shares it over to both legs of your RV. Um, and here's a more stock, straightforward one. So for instance, this guy right here is a 30 amp twist lock. Again, this would be on, like on a, um, a 2000 watt companion generator or a 3000 watt class inverter generator. Um, and it's sent so you can plug in what's called your TT30 shore power connector over here. None of these can give you more power. Man, I gotta tell you, it'd be great if they did, but no, they do not. Um, basically, the three levels of power that we've got to work with in RV systems, uh, 20 amp shore power is really only good for 2,400 watts, not a whole lot of wattage. So this is why we don't use them in RVs hardly at all um, to plug into. Um, a three, 3,600 watts of it is available from a 30 amp shore power thing. It looks like it's a much bigger connector, but it's only 50% more power than a 20 amp. And the big boy right now is the 50 amp at 240 volts. And it can output 12,000 watts, pretty good, right? So it's 50 amps times 120 volts. So it's 6,000 watts per leg is available. And there's two legs, leg one, leg two, 12,000 watts of power. This is why when we step down from a 50 amp down to a 30 amp, we start tripping breakers because you're not used to having only 3,600 watts. You've been um, using 12,000 watts and not had to worry about much all along. So we still have to worry about wattage, but you'll trip breakers if you use too much. Okay, let's talk a little bit about EMS total protection surge protectors. Why do we need this? Well, campgrounds can have poor power. A lot of the modern ones have really nice electricity, but many of these were built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s before every RV had one or two air conditioners. And they require a lot more power than campgrounds were built to provide back then. Um, RVs now have complicated electrical systems with lots of electronics can easily be damaged. And unless a campground, campground is properly designed and maintained, it's possible to create under voltage, over voltage, and hot skin voltage conditions very, very easily. And you wanna protect your RV's electrical system from this. So let's talk a little bit about surge protectors. Well, they come in all sizes and jewel ratings. Um, and so basically, this is what a home strip right here is what we see all the time, these little guys. Um, the ones that you can get in your RVs are like big boy versions of these. So the RV is big enough to power all of your RV stuff at the same time, your entire electrical system. So what is this voltage surge we speak of all the time? Actually, I don't like the word surge, it's more of a spike, but it's generally defined as the short duration over voltage event um, that can measure between 200 to 2000 volts or more. And the spike duration can be as short as a few milliseconds for a nearby lightning strike up to a second or more for high voltage line faults when they're tr switching transformers and, and lines around on it. And it sort of looks like this. Um, so down here in the bottom, this is what our 120 volts AC looks like. Okay, and as it's moving along, if something happens in the electrical system, you can have a spike upwards of 2000 volts. It only lasts, you know, milliseconds if that. Um, so what happens is you have something that's called a MOV device inside of these surge protectors, and it will attempt to clamp it to a lower voltage, generally 300 volts or so. Um, each time that, though that it does it, that MOV device gives up a little bit of its life. So when you see these jewel ratings, um, the surge protectors with higher jewel ratings actually can protect you against more and higher power surges, these spikes. They come in two classes. So you got basic ones and kind of advanced ones. The basic one only has these metal oxide varistor devices, these MOV devices. And they're good for a spike, but they can't protect your RV from over voltage, under voltage, open ground conditions. They, they don't do anything. They just protect you against spikes. Um, and so they're only looking for these spikes that are very, very short duration. They cannot stop over voltage conditions. So if something happens and the, the campground voltage goes super high or the neutral opens up and now it's dumping 200 volts into your RV, they cannot stop that. 
they will happily put that through and who knows. Um, but all the major manufacturers of these surge protectors make these intelligent relay driven surge pro products. Um, so the total one, the, the one we've, we're all used to is something that's called an EMS for electrical management system. So a lot of the other companies are calling them total protection uh, surge protectors. They include a, a voltage monitoring system and a relay that will disconnect your RV from a dangerous voltage condition. Uh, they monitor for over voltage, under voltage, open ground conditions. They all have this, M this MOV spike protection, and many of them now include some sort of Bluetooth monitoring or a separate uh, monitor control box. So basic ones um, kind of look like this. You, know, you plug in stuff up top. Whoops, there we go. Plug in stuff up top, plug into the bottom, and they'll have a set of lights on them, kind of like a... Um, a big boy version of your three light detector, and they will protect you against voltage spikes. Um, however, they cannot protect your, your RV against a voltage that goes too high, too low, or an open ground. They can indicate when you have an open ground or reverse polarity, but they do nothing to protect you against really high or low voltage or open ground conditions. The EMS, or Total Protection Surge Protectors, they not only have warning lights and a message screen, they will show you the voltage, the amperage, they will tell you if there's a loss of ground, and if something goes wrong, they disconnect your RV. And some people complain, well, it keeps disconnecting me. And I'm going, well, that's because the power is going really, really bad, and it's trying to protect your RV, because you could do tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage in seconds if something goes wrong with your power coming in. But these bigger ones have a relay to disconnect you. So um, they're doing, doing exactly what you've, pay, what you've bought them to do. Do you need a basic one or this advanced surge protector stuff? Well, the basic ones protect you against spikes from nearby lightning strikes and power transformer switching and such, but it cannot disconnect you from an over or under voltage. And only these EMS total protection protectors can monitor and disconnect you from all of these dangerous conditions. However, there's a price to be paid because uh, basic surge protectors cost you about 100 bucks. The total electrical protection ones, the EMS, cost you three to 400 bucks. But I think this is cheap insurance because if something goes wrong, not only do you have to consider it can do thousands of dollars worth of damage, your RV can be out of service for months till you get this thing repaired. You can lose an entire season. I think this is cheap insurance. Okay, number five, running air conditioners from smaller generators. Okay, so you've got your RV, you wanna go boondocking, you bought yourself a nice Honda or Harbor Freight or whatever it is, 2000 watt uh, class generator. And the first time you hook it up to your, uh, your, your RV and the air conditioner kicks in, the generator just goes Ugh, and stops. So modern, you know, inverted generators are great, but they're very, very sensitive to these short duration peak currents. So this can cause all kinds of problems when um, powering an RV from these smaller generators. Um, now, some people, what they do is they d install something they call a hard start capacitor that costs you 15 bucks. Um, but they're not really designed to reduce the starting surge. They actually increase the, uh, the amount of current and the duration. Um, so there's really no such thing as a cheap soft start capacitor. What you need is a soft start controller. And I've done a lot of studying on this over the last year or so. And the one that I've done the most studying is uh, something that's called Soft Start RV. Um, you know, RV air conditioners, again, they have this huge starting current that can be 50 or more amperes of current for a very short duration, um, you know, during the starting cycle. And that's what trips these things. But Soft Start RV controller lets you use a smaller generator on this. You can use a 22, 2400 watt generator very successfully to start even a large rooftop air conditioner. Um, or you can use this, uh, if you have one of these uh, units on each of your, um, let's say you have two air conditioners on the roof of your RV, um, one of these on each air conditioner will allow you to run two of these on a 30 amp uh, pedestal quite successfully. Um, I've measured starting current of a regular air conditioner. Um, and I've seen this reduce the starting current from 54 amps down to 24 amperes. Now, when I say I've seen it, I mean, 
I really went and looked. I did. I didn't believe anything in literature. I don't believe anything. Uh, you guys know I used to, um, you know, I was a robotics designer for Corning in the 70s, and I used to build and calibrate nuclear guidance systems in the 80s for Bichet and uh, Angstrom Precision. I'm used to measuring things. So um, last year I designed and built something I called Hurdle, a high-rate data locker that I can sample the currents on surge currents at 192,000 times per second. Nor normal data loggers only do it five times a second. doesn't show enough detail. But I was able to see that uh, this technology, Soft Start RV, will reduce that starting surge by at least 50%. And it does it like this. Isn't this neat? This is a graph I pulled right from my logger that I built, that I designed and built from scratch. And you can see what happens here with a regular starting capacitor in an RV. There is this huge peak, very short duration. This is on the order of 150 milliseconds or so. So it's got like a 52 amp peak, settles down to um, 14, 15 amperes or so. Um, and that peak is what generally trips these generators off. But Soft Start RV, that, well, what it does is when it starts up, it, instead of doing this really fast ramp up, it does this slower ramp right here. So it only does a 24 amp peak. It takes longer. It takes like a third of a second or so, about 330 milliseconds to do this, but it reduces this peak startup current from 52 amps down to 24 amps. And, and that's what allows this thing to keep running. And I've done this test hundreds of times. It's pretty neat. Yeah, you can go look this up. I've got videos of this running in real time with meters going off to the side and everything. And again, this is not something that I pulled from manufacturer's literature. This is something I designed and built in my own lab and tested it on real air conditioners to see how it worked. So if you have, the other advantage of this is your air conditioner doesn't do a big thwomp when it starts up and wake you up. It kind of does a little whoosh and then many times you can't even hear the compressor starting up. So I think this is a far superior technology to the original capacitor in it. And again, this is not a $15 hard start capacitor. These things are not real cheap, but they work really, really well. Okay, let's talk about shore power connectors. Um, shore power connectors can overheat and melt due to oxidation or damage. And, and I really think that these plugs and outlets, they're the weak link in hooking up to campground power. Um, and while, you know, you can get campground pedestal connectors in 20 and 30 amp versions, you can easily upgrade the twist lock inlet connectors on your RV to a far superior system. Um, let's talk a little bit about pedestal power. What the heck is this? So when we say a pedestal or shore power, what we mean is it's this temporary campground power that you connect to, to your RV. And so they come in 20, so this is a 20, 30, and 50 amp versions, so 20, 30, 50 amp versions down here. However, worn outlets on many of these pedestals can in fact cause you to have a, um, you know, overheated plugs and meltdown. Well, you can't upgrade that pedestal, however, you can uh, upgrade the other part of it on the other side of your RV. So most of your RVs use a twist lock connector to connect shore power to what we call the RV inlet. However, if you don't connect these properly every time, they can develop a high resistance connection that can result in voltage drop under load, over voltage from an open neutral, hot skin contact voltage, or even a fire. And all new Airstreams use something that's called a smart plug, which is really neat. So this is what you gotta watch out for. Here's the old style ones, stock RV ones, these twist locks, and we've, I have dozens and dozens of pictures of people have sent me of these things melted down. Many people were not taught that when you put them in, the reason why we call them a twist lock connector, you have to twist them and lock them in. Um, and then you also have to spin on the locking ring to keep these things, keep the weather out of them and also to keep them from drooping. Um, a lot of people don't know that. What I like far better than that is something from a company called Smart Plug. These things just click right in in a second. There's no way to, that you can have to worry about which way they're oriented. Um, they have 20 times the surface area of the, in the contacts of a standard twist lock connector. Airstream now uses these smart plug connectors on all their trailers and Class B rigs. These things are fantastic. They're available in 30 and 50 amp versions for your inlet. 
Um, you can purchase just the plug and install it on your old power cord, or you can get cord sets with the smart plugs already built in. Um, it's actually a simple enough installation you can do yourself to replace an existing twist lock inlet um, on, your, on your RV, uh, side of your RV and or on the plug, uh, shore power plug itself. It's, it's not bad. Okay, finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about the car generator backup. Um, now, here's the deal. I, I like generators. I've got, gosh, I probably have half a dozen generators of all size. I use them for shows. I use them for wo the woods. I use them for backup power at the house. I use them all the time. However, you may not want to carry a generator and gasoline with you if you're, let's say, primarily solar powered. Um, but they do require maintenance and fuel. I go out and start mine up every few months. I make sure I put stable fuel in there and I, I run the fuel out of them at the end of the year. Um, but there's a company that I, I found a couple years ago, which I thought was great. They it's something called Car Generator. They make a portable inverter generator that connects to your, your car, your vehicle battery and your alternator. And they can supply up to 1500 watts from a standard car truck alternator with the engine idling. So now a lot of people worry about engines idling but modern vehicles can run at idle for days without damage due to electronic engine controls. And in fact, um, I had a Ford F-150 power boost over the summer for a few weeks to play with. Um, they say that uh, they rate it for running like 80, what is it, 85 hours on a tank of gas at idle while it's powering its built-in 2400 watt alternator. So it actually works. I've never seen a modern vehicle fail, fail from extended idle periods. That's not true. 60s and 70s would clog up all the time, but modern vehicles just don't care. So this is um, called car generator. And basically this is a waterproof inverter, all the proper connectors that can plug into your, into your uh, alternator battery set in your vehicle. Um, if you don't want to haul around a portable generator and gas, this is really, really an effective little unit you can throw in the trunk. You never have to worry about whether you strain the gas out of it or whatever, but it's pretty handy. So they come in one kilowatt, one and a half, two kilowatt, and three kilowatt sizes. I have a one kilowatt unit that I've done a bunch of testing on. Um, and basically they hang on the front of your car. You have all the appropriate connectors that can either clip right to your battery or you can uh, actually bolt in the wiring and use a big Anderson connector there to uh, connect the two of these things together. Um, there's also a kit that allows you to use this for home backup power if the power goes down for a couple of days and you still have your vehicle there, you can plug this in. And you know, you are not gonna provide enough uh, power to be able to run your electric range, but by golly, you can run all of the basics in your house. Um, you know, it's a, a microwave, um, you know, you've got your lighting, most importantly, Wi-Fi and television stuff and computers for the kids to keep them out of uh, trouble. Yay. Yay. Specs. Um, the one kilowatt units, 11 pounds, the two kilowatt units, 15 pounds and the three kilowatts, 17 pounds for the, for the two and the three kilowatt unit, you'll need a heavy duty alternator in your, um, your tow vehicle to do this. They're rainproof, zero maintenance, and you don't have to worry about the other stuff. Now, I think this is a good alternative if you're um, solar powered and, uh, every, and you're boondocking and you in occasionally need to fill up the panel, fill up the battery because the sun hasn't been shining for the last couple of days, run this for an hour, you can recharge your battery. I think that those are really, really great for that. If you're gonna be running air conditioners and all kinds of heavy duty appliances all the time in your RV, this is not the product for you. But if you just need extra backup power, this is a decent backup power system. Okay, that's the class for today. Let me show you. You can click on these things. You can go to technorv.com or you can click on any of these QR codes here. Um, these guys all uh, provide information and sell surge guard products, smart plug products, and soft start RV products. And if you want, tell them Mike Sokol sent you. Um, you can find out more about car generators and purchase here. So cargenerator.com or just go click on this QR code right here and it'll take you to their page. You can also find hundreds, I mean literally hundreds of my RV electricity articles 
over on rvtravel.com. And all you've got to do is you can click on this QR code or you go to rvtravel.com and under the search bar, you just put in RV electricity, one word, RV electricity, just like I've got it there. And boom, you'll find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of my articles, dozens of videos, all kinds of my um, answers to stuff. I've been doing this for a little while. You can also find more information from me. Um, I'm on a lot of forums. It's either Mike Sokol or J.M. Sokol. John Michael Sokol. Get it? J.M. Sokol on most forums. Mike at No Shock Zone is my direct email address. You can go to rvtravel.com or rvelectricity.com to look up all kinds of articles and stuff that I've done. If you're on social media, go to Facebook, look up um, RV Electricity Group or Go Green RV Group. Go Green RV is for my new section I'm doing on electric vehicles and energy efficient RVs. Some of the RVs actually have batteries and motors in them. Yay. Or you can go to YouTube um, channel, my YouTube channel there. I've got an RV Electricity channel and a Go Green RV channel. And again, dozens and dozens of videos on how to use meters, how to test things, what happens when you make mistakes and overheat, on and on and on. Okay, that's my uh, thing for today, uh, basic electricity. Um, again, I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, Southwire Surge Guard, Soft Start RV, Car Generator, and Smart Plug. And um, if you've got questions, I've got answers. Look me up anywhere, hit me up anywhere, and I'm more than glad to try to help you. Again, I'm Mike Sokol from RV Electricity, and thank you so much for watching. Let's play safe out there.